So in year 12, I got 28 out of 75 or 37% for my HSC year 12 half yearly chemistry exam. Now in an Asian selective school where anything less than 90% is considered terrible, this would probably be considered a disaster. And I had actually single handedly managed to bring down my class average by about 5%. So you might be thinking that I'd be depressed or embarrassed after a humiliating result like this. But in actual fact, it was probably one of my greatest achievements that helped me get the 99.9 ATAR in the end. So in this video I'll share how this happened and why this was the case. Hey so for those of you who don't know me my name is Shane and I'm a third year engineering and commerce student at the University of Sydney and I graduated the HSC in 2017 with a 99.90 ATAR. On this channel I share a lot of unique studying tips and tricks as well as insights into college life so if any of that is useful and interesting to you subscribe to this channel to not miss out on more of these videos in the future. So to help you guys better understand the story, I have to first explain how our academic system works in New South Wales, Australia. In year 12, we have subjects that we can choose to do. So there's maths, English, physics, geography, history, PE, you get it. And most of these subjects generally have a two unit weighting. So to achieve an ATAR, what you have to do by the end of year 12 is you have to have completed a minimum of 10 units of study. And then they use your 10 best units to give you an ATAR score. Effectively, is just a rank of where you compare to the rest of your grade. In addition to doing units in year 12, you can do what you call accelerated subjects. So you can do two units of study in year 10 or year 11. And these are counted as year 12 subjects, which contribute to the 10 unit requirement of your ATAR. So of course we had to do 10 units of study by year 12, which is the HSC rule. But there was also a rule in our school that said we would have to do at least 10 units of study in year 12. So this was the thing that didn't really work for me, which was I'd already completed two units of accelerated economics in year 11 and I already knew the result of that which was from my HSC result which I knew I did quite well in. For the ATAR requirement it was actually compulsory for us to do at least two units of English and then I was also doing two units of maths plus two units of extension two maths so that was another four units of maths there and maths was my strongest subject so of course that was probably going to count. So that was eight units already. Now I just had to think whether I wanted to do physics or chemistry which were both worth two units each. So by the HSC rule, what I could do is either take both of these subjects, split my effort 50-50 between the two, and then take the HSC exam for both of these subjects and just take the result of whichever one I did a bit better in. This meant I would have to split my time greatly and it means I wouldn't perform at my best for either of these subjects. And in the end, one of these subjects would be wasted anyways. So what I preferred was the second option, which was to pick the subject that I was slightly better at, in this case, physics, put 100% of my effort into it, and then hopefully get a great result from it. That would count towards my ATAR requirement. But here was the problem. It didn't satisfy the school rule, which was you had to do at least 10 units of study in year 12. Because I had done two units of accelerated economics, I only had four units of maths, two English and two physics to do in year 12 which was only eight units. So this was something that actually really annoyed me. So in the end, I did have to continue studying chemistry. So what I thought was they can make me take the subject, but they can't actually make me and force me to study hard for it and then do as best as I could in that subject. So disclaimer, first of all, I have nothing against any of my teachers in year 12. They were all great people. And if you know me well, I rely heavily on my teachers at school instead of tutoring to help me achieve those great marks. And I also do feel very guilty for my chemistry teacher because he was a great teacher who I've had before and the way he explains all these concepts was something that I really enjoyed, how he makes it simple for you to understand and he was a great person in addition to being a great teacher that was very supportive. So what ended up happening in the four hours of scheduled class time for chemistry was I was either doing homework for my other subjects like writing my English essays which all the people sitting next to me can attest to or I was just using it as a break time, for example, playing some Tetris or watching like the weekend's football games on ESPN FC. So in class, I never actually learned any chemistry. And of course, I never did the homework or any revision tasks that were given to us. The only thing I ever did was I took part in the practical tasks, like doing the experiments and stuff. And that was just because there were three of us in the group and I didn't want to leave it to the other two and burden them with having to do all the experiment by themselves. And it was also kind of a fun break for me as well. So shout out to my two lab partners if you're watching, you know who you are. So then comes that fateful day in early July where we have to sit our chemistry half yearly exam. And I arrived to the venue about 20 minutes before the exam starts. 
and having done no revision or study for chemistry ever since the start of the course. 20 minutes before the exam, I whip out someone's notes from the grade above who I managed to get a copy of and I just skim through it trying to stuff my brain with whatever knowledge I can. After about five minutes, I eventually give up knowing that it's a completely lost cause and I just go on my phone and play FIFA Mobile until the exam finally commences. Not surprisingly, during the exam, I know absolutely nothing. And in the multiple choice section, I pretty much just resort to guessing or using as much common sense as I possibly can. And then for the written response sections, having, because I don't know anything, I use the multiple choice section, kind of like my notes, um, because there's a bit of information I can use from there and just try to answer as much as I can. Uh, I write a lot of rubbish, I write a lot of waffle and just pray to God that it gets me whatever marks I can. So as I mentioned, it's a two hour exam and everyone else is frantically writing, trying to finish the paper. But for me, I already don't know what else I can make up and just write down. So I'm just there after about half an hour into the exam, I'm just there twiddling my thumbs. I'm looking around, going to the toilet every now and then and just like pretty much giving up on the exam, to be honest. A few weeks later in our chemistry class, we get the papers back. I sit there with my 28 out of 75 and the teacher looks at me like, Shane, what happened? And a few of the other students are looking at my paper and go like, oof. But while they all felt sorry for me, to be honest, I feel like I didn't really care at all because I pretty much knew that I didn't want to focus any of my attention into that subject. I wanted to focus it into my other subjects. And that was just the result that I had been expecting. To be honest, I was actually quite surprised I even managed to get 37%, especially since I had no knowledge of the subject or material beforehand, it was all complete waffle or rubbish that I wrote down and the multiple choice were pretty much all guesses or common sense. So by no means was I disappointed by the result that I did end up getting. So I actually made a bet with another person who was planning on dropping that subject. So we decided that the winner would be whoever got the lowest mark as long as it was above 50%. But in the end, both of us had failed. We both got less than 50%, so none of us won that bet. So moral of the story, why was it my proudest moment? By putting in absolutely zero effort for my chemistry exam and completely flunking it, I had managed to put 100% of my effort or the little effort that I do manage to normally put into my studying into physics, which I did end up getting a very decent score out of. And physics, in addition to the four units of maths and two units of English and my accelerated economics, were the ones that I knew would be probably contributing to my ACE and most likely not chemistry. So what I had effectively done was put all my eggs into one basket and gambled on that succeeding instead of putting a little bit of effort here and there and hoping that one of them would do well. If you think about it, I was only doing eight units of subjects in year 12, while a lot of other people were doing 12 units of study. So they would effectively have to do at least 50% more work compared to me just to stay on the same level and put in the same amount of effort into all of their subjects. Also, given how badly I did in that exam, it was very clear that I didn't have much intention of studying for that subject properly and putting in any effort at all. And even though the teacher who organized all the subjects that we had to choose in year 12 got really annoyed at me because I asked him what were the consequences if we simply didn't turn up to the final HSC exam and effectively be getting a zero, he did eventually let me drop the HSC chemistry subject because that way it wouldn't affect the rest of our school grade when they took the HSC chemistry exam. This all worked great for me and the school in the very end. I could focus 100% of my attention into those eight units of study that I'd wanted to do in year 12. And this really went a long way to reducing my burden and helping me get that 99.90 ATA. And for the school, there was no one at the bottom of the cohort who was going to drag down the rest of the grade because they just were so far behind everyone else. So there you have it guys, that's the story of how I failed my HSC chemistry exam and how it was actually one of the proudest moments of my year 12 academic year. Let me know in the comments below if you thought what I did was being smart or I was just a bad and terrible student. If you enjoyed this story, consider sharing it with your friends who are maybe taking their HSC this year. And it would mean a lot to me if you could subscribe to this channel and like this video as it would go a long way to helping me make more content for you guys in the future. Take care and I hope to see you all in the next video.